So when I originally started making this video, I really just had the idea to make a Ridgeway's Pride build. And, you know, just kind of whatever build that I, I wanted to make, whatever, you know, I, I discovered that was good and effective, I was going to use that as, as the build that I was going to show you. But as I, you know, started testing things, as I, as I dug deeper, as I was experimenting with it, I kind of decided that, you know, just giving a generic build probably isn't the best route to go with Ridgeway's Pride. And the reason for this is because Ridgeway's Pride, depending on how you look at it, either has a lot of potential or it is trashed here. You know, maybe not trashed here, but, you know, pretty low on the totem pole. Now, just to quickly explain it, basically Ridgeway's Pride is kind of a, a generic red DPS set, you know, crit chance, crit damage, weapon damage. And whenever you're within 10 meters of an enemy, whenever you hit them, basically you can apply bleed. The purpose of this is basically whenever you're within range of all of these enemies, you know, depending on how many enemies are near you, you get armor regeneration for each enemy that is near you. So basically, you know, currently, uh, you know, one enemy gives you 1% armor regen, but five enemies would give you 25% regen as long as they're within that 10 meters. Now, the problem with this is that getting into that distance 10 meters from five enemies, you know, and keeping them on bleed so you can get this regen is is rather laughable i mean it, it's it's not it's not a commonplace situation to just run into a herd of enemies spray all of them with your with your submachine gun or ar and then just let the regen win the battle for you like i mean it doesn't really work that way and even in pvp it doesn't really happen that often i mean so basically you're kind of putting a lot of eggs in in the single basket of making enemies bleed and dancing around them but you have to have a lot of enemies to really get a beneficial bleed. Well, I basically played an entire day of nothing but skirmish. I probably went through, you know, like 60 or 70 matches or something like this. And through that entire time, I was basically just trying to test out different variations of Ridgeway's Pride just to see, you know, what works better, what, what actually works well, and can I fine tune it? So basically, the build that you're seeing me run around with pretty much is just a Hunter's Fury build with Ridgeway's Pride and a, a goal on backpack and in this case it's the anarchist cookbook with perfectly wicked now perfectly wicked whenever i apply a status effect i get 18 percent total weapon damage for 27 seconds that's you know a really nice bonus to have especially if you're you know into running and gunning because obviously vigilance is a really strong backpack talent for players who are hiding in the back a little bit or for players who are playing a little bit more defensively or using you know like the the bulwark shield if you are rushing up to an enemy, obviously that's not going to do much for you. So this does give you a good amount of damage for being able to, you know, run up to enemies and take damage while you're shooting them, right? However, I did want to mention that, you know, the set is about applying bleed to enemies. And like I said, you don't really go around running in a circle, you know, just spraying all the enemies. You generally focus on a single enemy until he's dead and then you move targets, which in this case, I would actually think that Creeping Death might be the better backpack talent, especially for PvE. Now, I mean, it, it does have a 15 second cooldown on, so obviously, you know, you can't constantly reapply it over and over again. But if you, you know, get a group that's coming out of the door, you know, spawn camping them, you can jump all of them with bleed, basically just apply bleed to all of them and get that regen. So that is a huge benefit for you. The other one that's not really commonly used uh, is the Eclipse Protocol Backpack. Now, it's been known for some time that the backpack talent itself does not require the four-piece. So whenever you hit an enemy with a status effect, you are basically dealing 30% amplified damage to that target. Now, if you are applying bleed all the time and you're applying the status effects, you are going to get 30% amplified damage, which is huge. It definitely out-damages the Anarchist Cookbook. The only issue with it is you know, you actually have to apply the status effect to those enemies. So if you run into players that are running a lot of hazard protection or are fighting you from, you know, further than 10 meters, you're not going to get any bonus whatsoever. At least with the Anarchist Cookbook, you know, once you apply a, a status effect to someone, you get that duration for 27 seconds, meaning you're going to constantly be able to have that 18% that total weapon damage rather than a more situational Eclipse Protocol backpack. Now you can just basically see here, I, I took some shots, you know, just using the Perfectly Wicked, you know, just to get a baseline of how much damage I was doing. And it, it's not bad. I mean, you know, the bleed's a little bit weak and, you know, the, the damage on the, on the pistol itself isn't that great. 
but I am getting, you know, a, a good bonus. You know, I am getting a noticeable bonus. But again, when you put on the Eclipse backpack, you are definitely getting a lot stronger bleed and you are dealing a good amount more damage, you know, just, just per shot. So it depends, you know, a lot of it depends on the situation. If you're really confident that you can just rush up to players, apply bleed to them, and, you know, constantly get this bonus and be within 10 meters, it's going to be, you know, a much better backpack for you than the Anarchist Cookbook. Now, obviously, it's really difficult to actually test the bleed in the range with, uh, you know, Creeping Death because you only get 10 meters. But any enemy within that 8 meters, you know, can be bled. So I could generally, you know, hit an enemy, and if he's surrounded by other enemies, get bleed on all of them. That way I can just focus on one enemy at a time instead of having to like dance around and shoot all these enemies constantly to keep the bleed active. Now basically the one thing that I discovered about Hunter's Fury with this build is that there's just too much focus on short range combat and it's not really extremely beneficial. I mean you're not getting a huge boost to your damage or really anything by, by using Hunter's Fury with the build. And in fact, it really seems like Hunter's Fury is actually just reducing the damage total. Now, it may give you a little bit more survivability depending on how you spec into it. But for that reason, I decided that pretty much a high-end build was going to be better. Now, my original variation of it was just to use Grupo Sombra, a Golan uh, with the Contractor's Gloves, the Fox's Prayer, and a Bellstone Armory Holster. However, for a up-close build, you know, I just didn't have enough armor, so of course... So pretty much I decided that I was going to sacrifice my crit hit damage from the group of Sombra. So I basically just got another piece of Golan and that'll give me another 1% uh, of armor regen. But I also took another pair of contractor's gloves that I had and I basically rolled the, uh, the, the weapon damage to armor. So in this case, I would have armor, damage to armor and crit chance. But now I have four armor rolls for my shield. So, you know, a much stronger shield, much more beneficial. But it also means that I'm actually getting a bigger damage buff than I would have if I was using the Hunter's Fury. Yeah, the 20% amplified damage is nice. But in, in this case, it really seems like the the uh, damage to armor and the damage to our targets out of cover uh, already you know, being boosted by the amplified damage from my Lady Death. I am getting a, a much more, I guess, competent buff of damage than I was with just Hunter's Fury. Plus, the damage is also applied when I am not, you know, within 10 meters. So I still get good damage outside of 10 meters and I'm still, you know, a, a deadly enemy at that point. Now that's not to say that you can't use Hunter Fury with the Ridgeway's Pride exotic. All I'm saying is that, you know, for my intents, for what I was using, for what I was trying to do, I didn't like it as much. And that was basically just based on the damage and the survivability. Now, if you're going for a more PvE route where you can get kills on a regular basis, you know, basically using that armor on kill, health on kill, then, you know, definitely uh, Hunter's Fury is probably the better option. Now, of course, there's plenty of other combinations that you could actually use with Ridgeway's Pride. And I mean, like I'm showing here, I'm using the shield a lot and I'm not even really a shield build. But if you are a fan of the Bulwark Shield, I mean, there are much better options out there for a build like this. Now, you could definitely go with a you know foundry bulwark build so you know getting that armor regeneration uh regenerating armor whenever your shield takes damage applying bleed to you know enemies because obviously you're trying to rush up to them and tank them and you're already going to have like a tier six shield anyway just because that's the nature of a foundry bulwark build for the most part and of course you know slap on the liberty pistol and you are just basically a, a super tank at that point i mean you're going to apply bleed to, to all the enemies around you and get even more regen. But at the same time, I know a lot of players who do use ongoing directive with the trauma chest piece. So you, you know, try to apply the bleed and the blind to an enemy. Well, I mean, what's the difference between that and, and Ridgeway's pride? Now, obviously, yes, you have to be a little bit closer, but it could still be a good combination depending on how you play and what you like. But there are other ways. I mean, you don't have to use an actual gear set. I mean, you could use the forge holster and the motherly love gloves and, you know, build a bulwark shield that way and you know rush up to the enemy with a really really strong tanky shield and basically just you know focus really in depth on just making a shield build but also getting that little bit of excitement with the bleed and the regen but now the most important thing i think is that if you watch state of the game this week they did say that they you know found the performance of ridgeway's pride to basically be lackluster so they are going to buff it significantly 
And the biggest benefit, I think, at least for me personally, is the range increase that will be happening. So they are going to increase the 10 meters to 15 meters. Now it's not a, a huge buff. It's not you know extremely uh, powerful because of this, but 15 meters definitely does make it feel a lot more viable. But the other thing they're gonna be buffing with the chest piece is actually the amount of armor regen per bleeding enemy in, in basically that 15 meter range. So instead of you know being 1% for one enemy, you're gonna get 3%. And I think it's 6% for uh, two enemies. So it basically just scales up there. And I think for five enemies, it's like 40 something or 50. It, it, it's, it's a huge amount. It's a huge buff. Um, you're basically pretty much just doubling all the values on it and, and uh, increasing the range by five meters. So it's definitely, definitely beneficial. However, it's still going to have that weird wonky feel to it where, you know, you're not going to go around spraying enemies. I mean, that's just a fact. You, no one goes around and sprays enemies in that manner. There's one build that kind of does it, or at least one gear set that kind of does it, and that's you know Negotiator's Dilemma. So could this buff basically allow for a, a very strong Negotiator's Dilemma Ridgeway Pride build? And I, I think it has a huge benefit. If you like Negotiator's Dilemma, I definitely think that that could be a top tier build um, after the next update. But we're gonna have to wait and see. Um, you know. Like I said, this build that I'm currently using with, with Ridge Race Pride, I do enjoy it. I do have you know enough armor to be tanky. Um, I have enough armor to actually give my shield some tankiness. I deal enough damage to actually be able to compete with other players. And that bleed, you know, it's just kind of fun to use. I mean, it definitely does mess up some players. You know, it, it ruins the rhythm a little bit when that, you know, the screen turns red and your instant reaction is, you know, not that you got bleed, but more along the lines of that you just got your armor dropped and you, you know, you're kind of like, oh crap, I'm going to die. From what I've seen, a lot of players just start rolling or they, you know, try to run away real quick and they don't really realize that they're not really in that much danger yet until they actually run away and now they are. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the upgraded version of Ridge Race Pride. Um, I definitely hope that it's viable in PvE and PvP. I do not want it to be like some super overpowered, you know, like clutch meta from when this game launched. But thank you guys for watching. I hope I at least gave you some ideas or, you know, made some interesting points. But either way, I'll see you in the next one.